It's James. And Stephanie. And we are super excited to be part of the launch of Winnebago's new Solus 59PX. So the 59PX is the same floor plan as the original Solus, only this one comes with extras. Right, and a lot of those extras are in the chassis, and we'll get to that later. But the main thing there is it's got an extra 18 inches on the back of it. Yes, and that's going to get you a gear garage. And we are super excited about that because yes. it is a great place to store bikes. And one of the other extras you're going to get on this one is a generator. That's right, a 2800 watt mm -hmm. Cummins Onan gasoline generator. But this is not an ordinary generator. This one is a quiet generator. And trust me, we're going to hit that later. You're also going to get an air conditioner yes. because, because you need something to do with that generator. <laughs> and that has been so handy because we have been camping it up in this thing and it's been hot. <laughs> right, so we're going to give you kind of our regular review. We're going to do a little bit of our regular review shtick, but then you're going to see a little bit of us camping. Yeah, some live action camping and then some tour as well. So you're going to see our stuff. <laughs> and our cat, our adventure cat, Mel. But it's going to be great. So <laughs> strap in and let's get to it. All right, onward. Okay, let's get this party started here on the passenger side. We got the blinds in the window because it was really hot. Like a hundred plus. And there's there's a long running board on the passenger side. It covers the front and the slider door. It's nice and wide and it's got that pet loop right there that's really handy for Yeah, for, for pet attaching owners. a leash to. Um, right behind that are the propane connections. There's the fill, emergency shutoff, and a bleeder valve. Yep. And right behind that, you'll see we have exterior storage for the sewer hose. Yep, now, that's going to be for your gray tank. You, there's no black tank on this rig. That's right. It's a cassette toilet, but you will need that to empty the gray tank. A um, little further back, we have got windows. Now, there are windows all around the back, and these are single pane glass windows. And oh. they, they get the Mel seal <laughs> of approval. <laughs> yeah, Mel came camping with us. There he is, making his cameo. You'll, you'll see him throughout the video. We couldn't get rid of him. Um, now below there are some uh, aluminum wheels as compared to the regular steel wheels on oh, the Oh, that's soles. a difference. Okay. Yep. So now here I'm showing you it's kind of longer in the yes. back than a regular Solus. And a regular Solus cuts off about there. Yep. And behind that is what we're really excited about. Mm -hmm. We'll get to that. Also, there's no awning. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> there is a pop top, but we personally aren't super huge fans of awnings on yes. RVs. Yes, and if you want to know how much we dislike awnings, oh, no, no, come no, find no. our awning spoof video. No, no, don't, RV. don't find that. But anyways, there's the pop top up, and it looks pretty fabulous. Yeah. And there's a little light there over the passenger door. So now oh, we're yes. moving around to the back of the rig. There's the AC. Air conditioner on the back. There's also a backup camera that comes from uh, Ram. And down below, pretty standard back there, down below there is a 3,500 pound trailer hitch with a four pin wiring harness. But the real star of the show is what's inside these doors. All right, so we're here at the back of the Souls and we're gonna spend some extra time telling you about the gear garage because this is a super cool feature of this floor plan. Yes, and you can see we've got two bikes in here. That's right, we've got my bike and then we've got Steph's new bike, Flatty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having issues with the tires right it's brand now. Brand new. Brand new. But anyway. Okay. <laughs> so no problem to get two bikes with it. The back of the the back of the sole is with the has L track, which you can buy all sorts of accessories. We were able to find two bike mounts and put them in just like you see there. They right. don't come with, but there's plenty of stuff that you can get. Yeah, and there's a lot you can do with the L tracks without having to buy anything. It comes with little rings, and you can see here we've attached our helmets to the rings, we've attached our running belts to them. Backpacks. And, yep, and some hats. Carabiners come in handy to hook things on the L-Track. So we're having a lot of fun experimenting with all the things we can do right. with now the Right, now also, we also had over there, it's it's deployed now, but we had a, a rug that was kind of lashed in. Right. And we've got, I don't know if you can see it behind the bikes, we've got a stand-up paddleboard. So we are loaded for all sorts of recreating. And the wheels, trip. the wheels oh, fit back there too. This is this is how the wheels go. You just We just have a wheel bag and we just stick them in like that. And the doors close, this does not impede hinge on any of the bikes. This so. has been wonderful having this gear space. It's a game changer. It really is. It, yeah. it, it makes the van thing so much more doable because they're not really in the way. That's the advantage of it being back here yeah. is I'm not tripping over them to get to the kitchen or anything like that. They're they're out of the way and they're with us and they're inside. Yes, it's awesome. All right, there's more on the back, but we'll take you back to other James and stuff for, <laughs> for more on that. 
<laughs> okay, there's more on the back here, but these are all things that you would find in the original Solus floor plan. Yeah, James is uh, playing with the blackout shades right now, the window coverings, and we really like these. Yeah, I really had, had I enjoyed them. I, I They were complete blackout. You don't have to worry about anyone sneaking a peek in the sides or anything like yep, that. Yeah, they were just very simple. There was nothing to rattle. And they stored right there in the window, so there wasn't anything to store either. Yep. Now, here I'm showing you this uh, this rod that makes what, what I guess you can call a rear annex. Yes, I've been calling this the lanai, this Not area the, no, back here. No, don't call it the lanai. Yeah, it just makes an extension off the back of the van so you can hang this curtain that comes with the solace. And you have this extra space back there. I guess it could be used for showering as that, well. That would be, I think, the primary purpose for this area. So it comes with, Solace comes with this curtain. You just kind of hang it up onto this back rod, and there you see it makes kind of a nice outdoor shower curtain. Yes, you can also throw it across the top of the van and make it kind of like an awning and put your chairs down there. And yes, then yes, yes. And then you're on the lanai. <laughs> All right. And now I'm showing taking down that, uh, that rod, and there we go. It just snaps into place on the sides. But hey, let's say that you decide that's not for you. No you, problem. You can remove it. it. It's attached with those same kind of uh, fasteners that are on the L-Track. Yeah, in those O-rings. Yep. So easy enough to remove. Now, also back here, we've got this kind of mosquito netting. Now, we didn't personally use this much because we had our bikes back there. We weren't going in and out the back. Yeah, we just kept it open the entire time. But it does zip down, closes off the entire back end, yep. as you can see. Ta-da. Um, and it stores on the sides. There are just some little Velcro tabs there for you to roll it up and store it. Cool. All right. What's next? Ah, the water center. Yes. Okay. This is a kind of a big deal. So the water center control panel. Lots of valves here so you can do things like winterize, sanitize your tank, fill your tank. And there's a nice little map there that shows you how to do each of those things. Yeah. They make it easy for you. Now, what I'm showing there is a connection for an auxiliary solar panel and a 120 volt outlet. And above that is a storage compartment. And I wanted to show the storage compartment, but we had a bunch of stuff in there. There's mm -hmm. our bike tools, there are some cleats, there's a bike lock. It's actually kind of a large it's, compartment. It's bigger than it looks right there. It goes in pretty deep. Some tubes, okay, come on, <laughs> come on. Well, that's a torque wrench, <laughs> which I had to install bottle cages, which I never bothered to install on uh, Steph's yes. bike because it was flat all the time. Yep, it wasn't really rideable. Uh, a floor mat, Steph's old cleats. And finally, here we go. This <laughs> there is, it is. is what you would use to attach to the exterior shower connection if you wanted to hose off outside. Okay. And finally, that's a siphon hose that does come with the Solus. And now I can show you the inside of the compartment. And there it is. Pretty big compartment and lots of stuff, as you see, can fit in there. <laughs> So that's doing it on the back. Moving around to the driver's side, I'm showing you the exhaust for the generator. Now, the generator lives kind of here midship in the back, just aft of the rear axle. But this is not an ordinary generator. So we're going to tell you a little bit more about that. Okay, another thing we're going to, and we don't usually spend a lot of time on generators in our reviews, right? But the Solus 59PX comes with a generator. But this is not your father's generator or your grandfather's generator. It's a quiet generator. I mean, they've made some significant changes. It's a Cummins Onan, but it's a quiet generator. And it is significant. Yeah. In fact, it's so significant, we're actually going to turn it on for you right now. So oh, stuff. I'll go do that. Yeah, turn it on. So the generator is mounted under here. The exhaust comes out the passenger side, and she'll have this turned on in just a second. And you can hear, because I've got a mic here. There you go. Once it's started up, that's it. It's running. Now, the noise... Yes, you can hear it. It's it's louder than no generator at all. But the noise is really not bad. Yeah, it's very different than a typical generator. In fact, I was at a grocery store mm -hmm. recently, and James was in the back of the parking lot with the generator running because it's really hot right now. Yeah. And I couldn't hear the generator until I was almost right up on him. And yeah, it was a parking lot, busy road there, but it was not objectionable at all. Nobody would have complained about that noise at all. No, it's really significantly quiet. So let me. Go, I'm going to walk around to the exhaust, maybe you keep talking. Look pretty. Okay. I'm going to I'm gonna go through <laughs> the exhaust. Um, the generator rocks. <laughs> I'm going to go with him. Okay. <laughs> okay. That was me sticking my lapel right up into the exhaust. So there you go. That's as loud as it gets. All right. Back to other James and Steph for more of the review. <laughs> 
warn me next time if you're going to leave me. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, so here we have uh, on the driver's side, 30 amp shore power connection. And we had shore power on this trip, so we were hooked up. Yep, and there's the hookups for the gray tank for dumping the gray tank. Yep, there's the opening and the valve. And in front of that is the actual gray tank. And it's actually gray. <laughs> <laughs> and this door here is for the cassette, but we were using it, so we're not going to open it and make you look at that. <laughs> right, now above those is a light in case you need to dump either the cassette or the gray tank, and it's dark. Mm -hmm. It'll kind of light your way. In front of that is a vent for the Truma Combi. That is a propane-powered air and water heater. And above that, that is just a vent for the gray tank. And moving forward, I think we have run out of things to talk about on the driver's side. Okay, looking at the front now. The thing I noticed most about the front is about 40 billion dead mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, we were camping in it, and so this is like a real review. I, I make no apologies for the dead mosquitoes, but uh, that's kind of the front, and there it is with the pop top open. All right, so let's go start working our way in and checking right. it out. This is a shot we always show just to kind of give you sort of an overview of what it feels like to walk into this Yep, rig. and if you're familiar with the regular Solus, it's pretty much the same floor plan, except for that gear garage in the back. Right, and Steph headed right back to the back because that's kind of where you like to hang yeah, out. Yeah, that's the penthouse. I like to hang out in the penthouse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, on the slider door we have a screen. This is kind of a similar screen material to what we had on the back, but this one has this cool magnet flap opening so you can just kind of walk right through it. Yeah, and we're very familiar with this. It's similar to what we have and we really like that. Right, and now it looks when you get up here and it, it snaps itself closed. It's pretty cool. It looks pretty dark, but it's really not. So this is from inside looking out and you can see it might look dark from the outside, but yeah, it's really it's... not impinging your view any. Absolutely. All okay. right, so now getting up into the bed, this is higher than a regular bed. Yeah, we wanted you to see that. It is a little higher, but that's okay. It gives you so much space underneath. Right, and so this, there's the step. There's kind of a little step you can use. And then that is all the stuff we had underneath the bed. Okay, so here we are in the bed area, and we have actually been traveling and leaving this bed down. Yeah, and that's actually, time. that's worked great for us. I've really enjoyed that because this area is just so spacious. I love that there's windows on all sides, and it just has a really good feel. I've been hanging out back here a lot. While I'm working up front. Right, right, because I just like to be here. It's so cozy. Well, there's a practical reason, though, why we've kept the beds down. And that's because of the bikes. Yeah. So the way the bikes fit in here on the track, the handlebar kind of protrude over the bed a bit and so putting the bed up and down would mean we had to take the bikes out each time in order to do that yeah. and now I was worried at first because I have to sleep over here on the servant side of the bed where I have to <laughs> climb over her majesty right. to get to the bathroom he's in the back so I was worried that uh, that these handlebars hanging over the bed were going to be like a head bonker kind of a thing or a foot bonker but it really hasn't been that big of a this bed is ex well, it's not extremely wide but it's yeah. plenty wide no it's really wide for a camper van well, and compared so to what we're used to it's considerably wide right right so that's been really great um and the mattress is uh, has been fine it's a little firm it's supported on slats and not the frilly springs actually in our own camper van lance i just took out the frilly springs and replaced it with slats so i'm on board on the slat concept yeah it's very comfortable i like a firm mattress i'd say this is firm wouldn't you but i like that feeling because it's not going to wear out over time because it's very dense and very comfortable for me so we've been really like in the bed yeah all right moving from the bed to under the bed area right and there's kind of a lot of storage here so i'm going to take out all the stuff we had under there that was a stand-up paddle board and that's mel's top loading litter box which is very handy for cat owners using a top loading in yeah. the van and in spite of it being top loading he had enough room underneath that bed to get in it that's yeah. why we kept it it wasn't just stored there that's where it lived so now this is the large storage area under the bed and it's really, I, I should have measured it, but I didn't. And there's even more storage under that, right? So yeah. here there's some doors and little latches to hold them. I just had some sort of automotive stuff. I think that's a jump starter kit and some pads for leveling the rig. Okay. And the other side is pretty much the same yeah, size. It's just more storage. Um, we've got some water hoses, bike pump and uh, a part of the ladder for getting up into the top, which which we didn't use. <laughs> we just jumped up there and jumped down, but Winnebago probably wouldn't approve yeah. of that, so you didn't hear that from us. <laughs> um, so now moving along to, to this storage compartment here on the driver's side. Yeah, this is a big wide one. It's really it's big. good for just kind of general supplies. Yeah. So we had a tool kit, uh, some bike bags with our bike shoes, and pardon my shoes, <laughs> but 
But this is kind of the size of that cabinet, and we didn't have it like a third full. Yeah. Now, this is a drawer that may or may not have contained underpants. So <laughs> not you, mine. You will not be seeing inside <laughs> that drawer. All right, now, on the other side, we had our bin of cat things. Yep, that goes with us in any van we're in. <laughs> And we had the video equipment that's actually used to shoot this review that you were watching. Yeah, it was so nice that it had a place. Yeah. Now, down below that, we just used to store a bunch of water bottles and it looks like some yeah. club there soda. There was plenty of storage. We did in not this use, van. we did not use much. It was of the impressive. Storage. Yeah. You'll see empty cabinets. All right. So now here is a electrical center that has both 12 volt fuses and 120 volt circuit breakers. Okay. And now we're getting back up onto the bed <laughs> and uh there once again is our video bomber and All here right. we go right looking at the storage up top now this was my side so this is where i had my clothes and some of the kitchenware too but you can see it's pretty spacious this side is deeper than on the driver's side cabinet so i got the deeper side the bigger cabinet yes <laughs> yes stuff. you did so that's and it magnets it. up, as yep. you saw. Just All the cabinets here magnet up, and they have slam latches. Yep. So. Here's the narrower side. Oh, you were very proud of your decor. Uh, yes. Everyone compliments Steph on yes. the decor. Right. Bicycling print and pillows. So cute. All right, so now this is the side that I had. It was quite a bit narrower than the other side, but still enough for me to get my clothes in. Um, there are bars in the middle of some of the longer cabinets to help keep things in place. And now back here... That is the hole for the roof access port, which uh, if you want to install an antenna or something on there, or just throw those anywhere, Steph. <laughs> Go ahead. That's fine. I do. Um, and then to power whatever you would want to put on the roof, like a cell booster, or Wi-Fi yep, booster. Yeah, you're going to do it right there. And I was just showing some USB ports there. 12 volt, 120, 120 volt. Yep. So there we go. And yeah, don't bother there putting those in. There you go. See, I put them back. Don't, don't put them in neatly. Just <laughs> shove them, shove, and now hurry up and slam the door closed. Come on. So it there was, you go. It's a narrow cabinet. <laughs> it was hard to get things to stay. <laughs> okay, this huge difference from the regular Solus. Uh, this has a, We should have had you do that. <laughs> You're really enjoying that air, aren't you? You, know, you had hair. It would have blown. It would have looked much better. So this yeah. is a Coleman Mach 10 NDQ. So it's a fairly quiet air conditioner yes. as far as these things go. Yeah. And there are some directional vents there and louvers on the front and back for you to close that up. And it was just really nice to have. It was a lifesaver <laughs> on this trip. It really was. <laughs> All right, so here's some more uh, about the l track because you can kind of get to that from above the bed. Yeah, better look at them. And you can see how they move here on the track or how they remove. There's the rings. And there's just so many possibilities with these. I can't wait to see what owners are going to do with yeah, this space. The sky's back the here. limit there. All right, so that's going to kind of do it for the bed area. So let's look at the galley, starting with this cabinet right here, which is actually a little deeper, if you can see. That one kind of sticks out a bit. Yeah, it does. Um, so long things would go there. And then this is the cabinet, sort of the main cabinet above the cooktop area. Yep. And we didn't come close to filling it. Yep. I'll just be, we were shoving towels and stuff <laughs> in there to keep things from rattling. That spice rack comes with it and a nice tall faucet. And oh, I'm going to go turn on the pump so I can turn on the water and check that out. Running water in one of our reviews. Yes. You know, we don't usually get to do that. Yeah. So that's a kind of a full flow sink. And then there's a, a nice light for your prep area right there on the cooktop. Now, it's a, it's a laminate cooktop. Yep. Two burner propane cooktop right there. Yep. And below here, we um, have sort of a countertop extension. Yeah, I guess that could be used as a cutting board, too. I don't it know. Was, it, was like a, it was like a high-density plastic kind of material. Mm -hmm. Someone will probably use it as a cutting board, but we, we did not. Yeah. There's a little latch underneath there to hold it in place while you travel. Now, this drawer holds a lot. Why did you bring those? <laughs> you never know when you're going to need twist ties. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, as you can see, the drawer holds more stuff than we really probably needed to bring. <laughs> and twist ties. <laughs> now, underneath here, this is where we kept most of our food items. Yep. And we didn't have any trouble. That's enough food for just under a week of our travels. So space was not a problem not in all. this. Now, there's a 120-volt outlet. And then I think you're going to show the Eco Hot. Now, what that is, is a system Winnebago provides so that you don't waste water waiting for it to heat up. That water goes back into your fresh tank. And I love this light right here. This is how you measure how much water you have. Yeah, it doesn't show up so good in this video, but that light is kind of shows the level of the fresh tank. Now, up here, that is a switch for the coach battery main cutoff. And here's some 
12 volt outlet and USB outlets, and then some light switches for an exterior and interior light. And below that is the refrigerator. And I'm not gonna lie, this fridge is small, but if you plan ahead, it's gonna work. It worked for us on this trip, we just had to plan. Yeah, you just gotta think through what you're bringing and you should be just fine. All right, well, you've seen the galley, so how does it all come together? This is Cooking in the Solace. Yes. Steph with dinner. <laughs> Welcome to dinner. Fortunately, it's her tonight, not me. So what are you making, Steph? Um, well, I'm making falafel salads. That's falafel cooking right there on the cooktop. And I'm shredding cucumber. I've got my yogurt. And it's going to kind of be a modified uh, tzatziki that I'm making because I'm using everything but the bagel seasoning because I don't have dill or, or the proper ingredients. So you work with what you have in van life. And as far as cooking in the Solus, well, it's tight like cooking in any camper van, but you just keep your recipes simple. You use all the space that you have. Look, I'm even kind of using the bed here. And I don't know, it kind of works. So James, you cooked last night. What do you think about cooking in the Solus? Well, about the only thing I could say is that um, there's no powered roofant in the oh, Solus. Yeah. And so we always make it a point to keep this, uh, this window right here by the stove open for ventilation. It's a propane stove, it just makes good sense. Right, right, a um, safety thing. Beyond that, yeah, like Steph said, it, it's it's small, but it works, and I'm really hungry, so <laughs> we're gonna get back to, the, to cooking now. Okay. We're across from the galley. It must be time for Dudes in Bathrooms. <laughs> I think this is your favorite thing to show in any van, Dudes not, in Bathrooms. Not, not really. It's just, <laughs> we always use me because I am the physically larger of the two of us, and so we want to give like a, a feel for how much space is in the bathroom. And in the Solace, it's not going to be a very spacious bathroom. But yep. If you have to sacrifice somewhere in a van, I think the bathroom's a pretty good place to sacrifice some right. space. And the way they've done that is the, the head on the... the Cassette toilet rotates so you can point it whichever way you want, and there's no sink, separate sink in the bathroom. And that rack could be for hanging things. Wet things, there's a little alcove for shampoo, mm -hmm. I wouldn't know. <laughs> um, and then over here is a little cubby where you could keep some toilet paper that'll keep it dry when you shower in yes. there. And that is a Trumacombi vent, so it's a heated bathroom. Look, Mel, try it. Mel's Smell checking it, it out. Seeing Hot, if there's food in there. so gullible. <laughs> okay, and then on the back of the bathroom door, there's a uh, full-length mirror. I which, see you're enjoying <laughs> that mirror. Yeah, and some vents to keep it uh, ventilated, or especially if you're hanging like something wet. And that hook right there can be used for coats, whatever. We were using it for masks and keys, and here we go with the dinette. Right, so now I'm showing you kind of taking the dinette down, and the table just pops off and it stores in a dedicated spot back here behind the seat, ba-boom. And then the pole kind of just wiggles out of there. And I started to wrap it, but I ran out of rope <laughs> as another scratching post for Mel. Aw, nice try. Yeah, I tried. All right, and it pops into place as well. Now, these seats, these are not your typical RV, some plywood with maybe a lap belt not kind of seats. Not at all. These are automotive grade seats yep, with, with three, three point, point seat belts. belts. Yep. yep. Uh, armrest, and I would not hesitate to put anyone I cared about in these seats for travel. They're really that nice. Well, and they're structurally sound in there too. There, are, There's a lot of steel underneath there bolted through the underside of the van even. All right. So, but I'm not done there because the bottom of the seats flip up and there's storage under there. This tray is actually what we had our camp chairs in. Mm -hmm. That's where we stored the camp chairs. Yep. And there's more stuff under there. It's like the Trumacombi and some valves that you'll use to winterize with and stuff. But there was not a lot of light in there, so it was really tough for us right. to you show You wouldn't anything. be using that for storage, below that storage no, tray. No, just the tray. And again, here we have USB outlets. We have 12-volt outlets. We have 120-volt outlets, which are currently charging, guess what, camera batteries. <laughs> um, and another uh, another outlet for the Truma Combi. Yep, that little floor cubby there was handy for a few extra things. We have a little broom there. and Shower so flops yeah. for uh, going to a shower house. And it is out of the way when you're not using it. Now, this compartment... We kind of ran out of stuff to store, so <laughs> that's what you get. We got like a GoPro mount and my shaving kit in this compartment. That's all we could come up with. Okay, as much as I wish I was retired, I'm not. I still got to work, and that includes on this camping trip. So let me tell you what it's like to work in the Solus. Um, not too bad, honestly. There were a few things I was concerned about. Like the size of the table, it looked pretty small, but once I set up on here, I even have room to, to have an external mouse, so we're okay with the size of the table. The uh, I was worried about these seats because I spread out a bit and I'm sitting in what amounts to the crack between these two seats, 
but that has turned out not to be a big issue. I'm not like sitting on a seat belt buckle or anything. That's okay. And then the third thing I was kind of really worried about was the air conditioner. Two things. I was worried that being way back in the back, it wouldn't be strong enough to keep it cool up here where I had to work, but it's been 100 plus degrees here and that's been fine. And then the other thing I was worried about was the noise. But in that case, being in the back is a good thing. I've been on conference calls. I've asked people, hey, can you hear that noise in the background? What noise? So that's working out great. Apart from that, everything for working in here kind of works out just as Winnebago had envisioned it. Um, there's some outlets down here, 120 volt, 12 volt, etc. I'm just plugged in with my laptop and I'm charging accessories off the laptop and that seems to be working okay. So working on the road from the Solus, not an issue. So behind the dinette is the control panel. So what do we got? All right, well, this first one is the control panel for the Truma Combi, the air and water heater. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of a one place panel for some of the Winnebago systems. There's right. a water pump switch, a generator start and stop switch. And then you check your battery here, you check your propane here, you check your gray tank here. Wow, you got all those. And yeah. our gray tank was empty. It's a good <laughs> feeling. Um, generator, hour meter. This is a uh, shut off for the propane if you need to shut off the propane from inside the coach and a solar charge controller panel, but you don't actually have to do anything right. with that. It's informational only. And that's the tank heater, which you only need for freezing temps, so Lordy, leave that we one did, alone we did in not need that. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, there's some more stuff here. We have a, another outlet for the exterior shower. 120 volt outlet there and the Truma Circle, so another Truma vent. Another Truma vent, so heat up there. Now, there's some more storage up over the cab, and we put some bulky stuff here. So yeah. there's some blankets, and this is my laptop when I'm not using it. We had a bunch of towels, a first aid kit. We had half the ladder the other up half there. Of the ladder we still that, had plenty of room left for other things. The other half of the ladder that we didn't use. So here's <laughs> Steph Whack-A-Mole. <laughs> <laughs> but check out those views. That's one of the things I really wanted to show with this clip, is it's just so pretty up this there. This would be the <laughs> coolest fort ever oh, if you were a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's two of these windows are, are mesh and one of them is like a, a plastic fabric. Now the bed up here is really long. No problem getting two full size adults. Yeah. And if you're taller, I would think maybe sleeping up top would be more appealing to you. Yeah. Now it is over the air conditioner, so it'll be a little warmer yeah. up there if you're running mm -hmm. the air, but you can hang off the top of it, which is what I was just showing there. Right. Now I think that's a little vent, that circle in the ceiling there. So you can get some ventilation up there if you don't have the windows open. And there's a light switch here, which... <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny angle. It's not, not my best angle, no, is it? No, it's uh, not. <laughs> so um, here we have, if you have devices and you're sleeping up there, there's some USB outlets and 12-volt outlets. Okay. All good. Now, here I'm pulling the pop top down, but I'm doing this without opening any of the windows. So it's like compressing a giant bellows of air. You might want to do that, I guess, if you had, you know, if it was raining outside and you need to put the pop top down. Right. But it's much easier to do when you have windows open. All right. Now, latching the pop top. This is a multi-step process. There's a twist and a flip. And then the safety backup right there. So this thing isn't going anywhere when you're driving. Absolutely not. I had no worries about the pop top flying no. open. Now, here we are up in the cab, and there's the back of the uh, window shades that we showed you at the very beginning of the clip. Yep, and it's pretty standard yep. chassis, but we'd like to go for a drive and let's talk more about the differences. Right, there are a number of differences between this chassis and the standard Solus chassis, so let's hit the road. Okay, um, we don't usually spend a lot of time talking about the cabs or the, of the chassis in our RV reviews because, you know, it's, it's not something that the RV manufacturers made. Right. But in this case, we've actually got a little bit of something to say because there are a number of differences in the chassis itself in the Solus PX versus the regular Solus 59P. And we'll get to that in just a second, but while we're here, Steph, what are your yes. impressions of driving the Solus? Oh, well, it's very familiar feeling because we've had the same chassis for the past five years in our RV land, so I'm comfortable here. One thing I love about the Solus that's different than ours is I, the visibility is wonderful. I can see really well out the back windows and I can use the side windows and yeah I'm very I love I'm loving this visibility but driving this chassis is very comfortable it it kind of drives like a car with the front wheel drive thing yeah, it's very easy to drive I've driven I a lot it. of miles and a lot of ProMasters and absolutely everything Steph said and we've both been doing some of the driving on this trip yeah but now to the uh, to the differences in the chassis and I have a list okay <laughs> on the 59 PX 
we have aluminum wheels. On the regular Solus, there are just steel wheels. Okay. On the 59PX, we have chrome front grille and fog lamps. And I guess not so on the regular Solus. Oh. On the 59PX, we have power folding and heated mirrors. Ah. On the regular Solus, they're manuals. So there's a button on the on the da on the armrest on the driver's side there. And so that's going to do it for the cab. Any final cab or driving impressions? Um, no, I think if you, I hope you all can hear. It's very quiet driving along. Uh, we're coming into some major winds right yeah, now. It's so quite windy. If you're concerned about driving a a van in like big crosswinds and we have them out west um the front wheel drive van it's always pulling itself straight it's really not a problem in in a pro master it drives the best in a crosswind of any of the van platforms that we've driven yes. so anyway all right back to uh whatever the other james <laughs> and steph are doing well, what we're doing is crawling around under the van yeah, what's this we <laughs> stuff this is me so i'm showing you there the two batteries there are two group 31 agm batteries there and in front of that we're looking forward now that is the propane tank it's not terribly large but it's only powering the truma and the cooktop so there you go tank regulator there we go and now we're in the back looking forward from behind the rear axle you can see the generator hangs down just a tad below that rear axle not a whole lot and uh you can see the leaf springs there and let's see now we're looking rearward from the front and i think we're kind of up under the gray tank you can see that is the heating oh, yes. pad I see very that. top of frame with the wires mm -hmm. coming out of it and there's the back side of the sewer hose storage which would be on the uh, on the passenger side there there's a better shot of the gray tank gray tank is long it is very and, long and, and i'm surprised at how big the gray tank is mm. and then i think the last thing we're going to show kind of up front is i wanted to show you like the whole ground clearance picture so if you're thinking of taking this thing off-roading or something that's kind of what you got to work with it's mm -hmm. like six six and a half inches or so well, we hope you enjoyed camping with us in the new Solus 59PX. That's right. There's a lot to like on the Solus, and there's even some stuff that we didn't bring, like that little table that lives under the bed. We didn't bring, we left the bed down the whole trip, yeah. so we didn't even bring that table. But if you want to see that table, you can see that in our other review of the original Solus over on the Fit RV website. Yep. So, so I think that's going to wrap it up for this bit. Let's get back to uh, recreating. I'm ready for some recreating. <laughs> Thanks right, for we'll watching. See you later. Bye. Bye.